tuxedo and gee how it fits he looks like the head waiter up at the ritz and i sheet music back in print is all about making available to the public via the internet a huge untapped pool of music that has largely passed from american knowledge and i found that music in antique stores and I've decided that I want to make it available in new digital editions so that people can browse my website, listen to that music, find a piece they like, print it out on their printer, then take it to the piano and play it because that's what it was written for. That's what it was meant to, to be used as uh, entertainment back in the day when the piano was the home entertainment center and you made music by sitting down with a piece of sheet music and playing it uh, to, for, for the sheer joy of it. Katie O'Connor from 10th Avenue was dancing with Francis Herbeau and after they finished alone So how do I get from this tattered old piece of music with its torn corner to this brand new edition that I printed on my laser printer? Well, the process starts with scanning the original music, um, and then we run a, a software package on it which does music recognition, and then that gets imported into our music notation program, Finale, where we do all the finishing touches. Then the Finale music notation software has the ability to generate the computer realization of the music. And over the years, they've gotten quite good at reading all of the interpretative features of the music, including dynamics, uh, tempo, and everything else, and they produce a pretty decent performance. So it gets people a very good idea of what that piece is going to sound like when they sit down and play it at the piano. All of the sheet music I use uh, dates from prior to 1923. Now, one has to remember that in the years from about 1890 through the 30s, the sheet music business was a very big business in the United States. And in fact, the piano was the home entertainment center for many years before there was a gramophone or a radio. Participatory music is something that I think we need to revive in this country. And I think this is a way that we can uh, help that trend. I got a call the other day from a woman who actually had tracked down a piece that was composed by her grandfather. And this was the only place that she'd ever seen it published. I mean, it had been published back in, I think, 1905. It was a sacred piece by um, a composer named Harry Hale Pike. And so she was very delighted to be able to find that that piece still existed and, in fact, uh, was available in a digital edition. There was a considerable amount of music in the early part of the 20th century that was published by the composer, uh, sort of as an independent piece. Um, I have an example of that here. This is a, a piano solo piece called To an Autumn Day by Frederick H. Wykes. It, it was published by Mr. Wykes in Marion, Illinois, which is a really quite a small town in southern Illinois, not a, not a very big place. One would suspect that he could only have afforded to pr print a few hundred of these uh, copies of this piece. It's quite possible that this, that what I have here may be the last piece that still exists. I've created a new digital edition of this piece, and now it will not disappear forever because it's online and, and it's there. I'm not saying that it's a masterpiece, but I'm saying it's good enough that it doesn't deserve to disappear forever from human memory. And I wears a gown that's got 28 slits When Francis dances with me